folks, today we're taking a look at uh, this game right here, Toledo from Martin Wallace, made by Mayfair Games. In Toledo, you are a member of a sword-making family, and we're trying to make uh, the best three swords that we possibly can and deliver them to the Emperor, uh, and then uh, have the most points and glory at the end of the game. Um, it's, it's a very simple, um, easily designed game that plays rather quickly, not a whole lot of downtime. Uh, so it hits on all the pistons. Let me show you how it works and we'll come back in a few moments. And the first person to get three swords uh, delivered to the Emperor will trigger the end of the game. The other players will each take one final turn and then at the end of that of those final turns, uh, points are awarded to the players for a number of different things. First of all, two leftover gems is worth one point. Swords are worth the numbered value on them in points. And then artwork is, El Greco artwork is worth the number of points that are uh, printed on the cards. So you add all of those points up. And then if anybody has the special movement skill, two points are deducted. And then whoever has the most points at the end of all that calculation is the winner. At the beginning of the game, uh, players are each take their own business tile cards. Uh, there are four different kinds of businesses. There are metallurgists where you can stop and trade and get metal, uh, steel for your making your swords. There are jewelers where you can stop and get gems. Uh, to get to add to the sword hilt and that type of thing. There are also fencing experts where you can stop and uh, increase your skill in fencing. And then there are also blacksmiths that um, actually will make the swords for you. Each kind of business has two kinds of buildings in it. There's one that has only one spot available to it, and then there's one that has two spots available to it. They're given a hand of five movement cards. Movement cards have a number of different uses on them. First of all, if you play them from your hand, you're going to be able to use them to move that far along the road in Toledo. Also, so there's a number of different numbers ranging from one to six uh, on, on these cards. Also, they're going to be the money, the currency that you use to trade with these different businesses as you move throughout the city. There are generally four things that you can do on your turn. You can play movement cards from your hand to move your guy along the spaces that are on the board. You can place one of your business tiles in an open area. Draw two movement cards for free on your turn. That is all you get to do on your turn, but you do have to replenish the cards uh, that you're going to be using to move and purchase, trade, uh, with these different businesses as you're moving along. So that is a free, easy way to replenish those cards. And then finally, the fourth thing you can do is you can uh, return one of your pawns that is on the road back to the cathedral so that they can start the path again. In order to move one of your pawns from the cathedral along the road, you would simply play a card from your hand uh, in order to do that. So if you played a two, you could then move your, spa your pawn one, two spaces. Now, you can continue moving him, or you can move another one, but in order to do so, you have to play another card similar or exactly like the one you just played. So if you played a two to move him to, if you want to move him any further, you would have to play another two. Now, let's say, however, that yellow here wants to move theirs five. One, two, three, four, five. They would be able to then... Uh, go occupy one of these circles and trade with uh, that tavern. Now, in order to trade, that's where these numbers here come into account. On this bottom row here, you have to pay at least one gold. If I move my five, I'm at the tavern, I choose I want to trade there, so I would go into one of those things, I would give one gold to the bank since nobody owns this tavern, it's part of the city, and then I would be able to draw three more cards. Then, if I wanted to, I could continue moving him by playing another five, or I could move one of these guys by playing another five. So I could go one, two, three, four, five, and go there, and then pay, I don't have a one this time, but I do have a two, 
And then I get to draw three more cards up into my hand. Now I'm still not done. I could still continue moving. This trading action that I'm doing with the tavern is free. It's not something that takes uh, a different action. It's something you can do while you're moving throughout the town. Now, as I said earlier, another thing that you can do on your turn is play a business tile onto an empty spot on the board. But if you'll notice, there are not enough spaces on the board where new business tiles can be placed for everyone to be able to play all of their business tiles. So you do have to be rather judicious on what you play and where. Uh, generally speaking, when you have one of your businesses out there, if you land on one of your businesses, you can trade with that business for free. But if somebody else lands on that business and wants to trade with them, they have to pay you this money. If you start your turn in a business, you cannot trade with that business and then move. You must move first and then trade. Okay, so I have randomly populated the city with different business tiles from each uh, so player. Green will take the first turn here. And um, we'll first of all go, we're gonna move three. So we gotta place that in front of us to show what our movement card number has to be. And we're going to move one, two, three. And I wanna trade with this guy. So I have to pay at least one with one card. So I would pay a uh, blue player a two. And that becomes part of his hand. And that allows me to take a steel token into my hand. Yellow player takes their hand and is going to move one. So yellow will move one. And I do desire to trade to up my fencing skill or my movement skill. And so I'll be generous and pay a two to green, which allows me to choose one of these. And I'll choose purple. Then I want to move one more time using a one and following with the card that I played originally. And I get to move to one of my own fencing artists. And I'm also going to trade with him, but I get to do that for free because it's my turn. So I'm going to choose uh, orange, red. I'm going to also pay one and move and then I'm going to pay two to green in order to choose which one of these. I'm going to choose brown. I'm going to move one more and come here because I want to learn from yellow's fencing artist. Now, if I want to do this, a duel occurs. So red being the attacker and yellow being the defender. Yellow has these two fencing abilities and red has the brown fencing ability. So best two out of three wins. So the first round is a neutral card, but the defender wins. So one, so one round goes to yellow. The next card is also a neutral and the second round goes to yellow. So red would have to come back to the uh, cathedral. That's two out of three. The duel is over. So blue player takes his cards and now he is able to move as well. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and kind of skip all of this tomfoolery up in here though. And we're going to go with a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he does want to trade there. So he pays one to red and takes a steel token for him. Then we're going to move six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to pay three because of this number right here. We're gonna pay three to the bank because nobody owns this tavern. And we're able to draw three more up into our hand. If I wanted to, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pay another six and go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to use a five, give it to green, so that I can use my one and purchase a, a sword, have a sword made. Now, it's only gonna be worth two points, but remember, the game end is triggered when one person has three swords delivered to the emperor. So this could be a blitz tactic that you could use during the game. 
Now, another thing I wanted to mention before I actually went over how you deliver um, a sword to the emperor up here is this move action. Let's say that green, let's just go there. Let's say that green was able to purchase this on his turn. Now, if it's possible for green to, let's say, I want to travel here. So on his turn, he would play a two movement card and then move to and go there. All right. So now to continue moving, he has to continue playing twos. But let's say he doesn't want to stop at this one. He wants to stop here because he needs more silver. All right. So he could on his turn flip this over so it's upside down and say, I'm using my special ability for this one and moving one, two, three, four. And then he would be able to use uh, money, uh, give it to blue, and take another one. Then, if he wants to continue moving, he would have to go back to the, to the original two that was played, and then he could trade with himself for free and get a gold. So this can really help you move around the board a lot easier, which is why it's minus two points at the end of the game. Now, if Red wanted to uh, deliver this sword that he just made, he's going to have to move exactly one, two, or one, two, three. He has to land exactly in one of these two areas in order to be able to deliver that sword. If he is able to play a two or a three movement card when it's his turn again, and then immediately he would be able to deliver that sword to the king, that pawn gets placed on it to denote whose sword it is, and then that would be uh, the end of his move action. And that's basically how the game goes with dueling and trading and moving and gathering resources and uh, using those resources to make the swords and then delivering the swords to the uh, emperor, uh, buying portraits if you want to do that to gain more points that way, upping your fencing skills, all of these different things uh, combine for a rather thematic Euro game. So that is Toledo by Martin Wallace, put out by Mayfair Games. Uh, might be a little difficult to find, might be very easy to find. It just depends on where you are and so forth and so on. If you find yourself at some conventions this year, it might do you well to go by and check out Mayfair's booth because usually this game is on their bargain basement type area where you can pay uh, very little money for a pretty good, decently designed game. Martin Wallace is usually known for his rather heavier games, thinky games. It does have the thinking depth that's there, but it has very light mechanisms and it plays very smoothly. And that's what I enjoy about it. It plays really fast, especially if you have somebody that's kind of blitzing and trying to just get those three swords up there as quickly as possible. Uh, the game can be over very quickly. If you have people that are really fighting for those higher point value swords and there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of dueling happening, it could take a little bit longer, but it still does not take very long at all. Would... The problem I usually have with Euro games is that you're just kind of doing the mechanisms to do the mechanisms. You, you're, you're, there, there's no thematic element to it that makes those m mechanics work and, and make sense to you. It, you're just doing it to do it. Here, it, it, it all flows well. I know it's, it's a very thin veil, of course, but it still works, and that's what I really enjoyed about it. Uh, it just makes sense. You have to pick up the resources that you need to make the sword. Then you have to go take those resources to somebody who can make the sword. You're trying to use your own businesses because that will uh, ultimately cost you less money. But if you have to, you can go to a different business, a, a rival that's down the street and use their business and have them make you the sword so you can get it to the emperor that much faster. Overall, I would put the weight of this game to a light to mid-weight euro, and where it falls exactly is going to be determined by who you're playing the game with, because this can be a, a fairly thinky game if you're playing with people who enjoy playing games like that that way. This is a very simple game, one that families would also be able to pick up, pick up on rather quickly as long as the as the kids playing are not too young because some of the mechanics are a little confusing and unintuitive uh, for that age level but I think 
a little bit older, maybe tweens to teens, would, would hit this with great ease. And so for family friendliness, this gets two thumbs way up. And for me, having a thematic Euro, another two thumbs way up. So I'm going to give this a very strong 8 out of 10. I really enjoy this game, and uh, I wish Martin Wallace would make more games like this. Um, and this was back when I think Mayfair was putting out some pretty good quality stuff. So if you haven't had a chance to go pick it up yet, I highly encourage you to do so. That is Toledo by Mayfair, designed by Martin Wallace. We'll see you on the flip side, folks.